Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, welcome to the 8th lecture of our course ADR in Arbitration. Uh, this lecture is on appointment of arbitrators and as you can see this is the first part of this topic appointment of arbitrators. I have divided this topic into two parts because this is one area of Arbitration Conciliation Act which has seen maximum number of changes happening. Since 1996 till today, section 11 which relates to appointment of arbitrators has been modified on various occasions either because of some judicial decision or because of amendments done. In both the significant amendments which I have mentioned 2015 amendment and 2019 amendment, in both these amendments Section 11 has been substantially modified. Why legislature is constantly working on Section 11? What has been the problem which legislature is facing and therefore modifying the provision? This is an important question in the context of law of arbitration in India. As I said in the previous slide that there is one scheme from Section 10 to Section 15 which relate to composition of the tribunal. In the last session, we discussed about section 10, that is number of arbitrators. It's a small issue, but still I include it in the form of a full lecture because the judicial interpretation doesn't seem to match with the language used in section 10. We declared it to be a derogable provision, although the language suggests that it is a mandatory provision, as I mentioned in the previous lecture it was criticized also but that happens to be the law event today. Now coming to the topic which we have to discuss now, appointment of arbitrators is covered in section 11. Section 11 as I said was amended in 2015, it was amended in 2019. Now prior to 2019 amendment, what was the law and let me tell you that the amendment of 2019, listen to me carefully, the amendment of 2019, the amendment of section 11 done in 2019 has not been notified so far because the working of new section 11 depends on implementation of a new part which has been inserted by 2019 amendment that is part 1A of the Arbitration Conciliation Act. That part talks about establishment of Arbitration Council of India. Now, unless that part is notified, the new amended provision is not going to be notified. Till that time, the unamended provision, the law which was there in the statute book prior to 2019 amendment still remains as the valid law. So therefore, both the provisions, the amended one and the unamended one, both are equally important today because one is in application, the other one is likely to be in application very soon. Therefore, we'll have to refer to the old provision as well as new provision. That is why I am talking about the section 11 which in statute book existed prior to 2019 amendment, which still is the law today. And it says that a person of any nationality can be your arbitrator. So there is clear freedom given to the parties to appoint any person of any nationality as arbitrator. The second clause of section 11 says that parties have the freedom to devise a procedure of appointment of arbitrators themselves. So parties themselves have to prepare a procedure for appointment of arbitrators. The only condition is whatever procedure you prepare it is subject to subsection 6 of section 11. I will talk about that also. 
Now, as we move to subsection 3, subsection 4 and subsection 5, you will see that different uh, provisions talk about the procedure for appointment of arbitrators in case the numbers are different. For example, if parties have agreed on the number to be 1, that means there shall be show, sole arbitrator. In that case, the arbitrator shall be appointed by the mutual consent of the parties. In case the number is 3, then the procedure is I will appoint my arbitrator, you will appoint your arbitrator and the appointed arbitrators will appoint the third arbitrator. Then the law says in case there is any default committed by anybody in relation to appointment process, for example, either I am not appointing my arbitrator or you are not appointing your arbitrator or the appointed arbitrators are not appointing the third arbitrator or if the arbitrator has to be appointed on the basis of consent of the parties, either of the parties is not appointing the arbitrator. In all these cases of default, there is a mechanism given in section 11 that in case of default, the appointment shall be made by the Supreme Court or the High Court. The appointment shall be made by the Supreme Court in case of international commercial arbitration and kindly note, we have already defined ICA, international commercial arbitration. It is an arbitration where one of the parties at least should have international character. But we are only talking about arbitrations which are done in India. So in case it is international commercial arbitration, the appointment shall be done by the Supreme Court of India. And in case of any other arbitration, arbitration other than ICA, a domestic arbitration other than international commercial arbitration, that means in an arbitration between Indians in India, the appointment shall be done by the High Court. So therefore, that is the mechanism. In case there is any default, the other party may approach the Supreme Court of India in case of ICA. The other party can approach the concerned High Court in case of arbitrations other than ICA with a request to appoint arbitrator and the Supreme Court or the High Court as the case may be shall appoint the arbitrator. That is the mechanism. Subsection 6 says and if you remember I said you have the freedom, parties have the freedom to devise their own procedure for appointment of arbitrators subject to subsection 6. Subsection 6 gives you certain requirements which must definitely be part of whatever procedure you devise for yourself. It says that whatever procedure you design, following must be there. Point number one, if parties have been asked to perform some act and the parties are not performing that act in relation to appointment of arbitrators, if either of the parties are not appointing arbitrator, if the appointed arbitrators are not appointing the third arbitrator or if Parties have designated an institution which will appoint arbitrator. For example, if you and me agree that in case a dispute arises, we will resolve by way of arbitration to be done according to the rules of ICC, International Chamber of Commerce. And suppose ICC is not appointing arbitrator. In all these cases, you will have to write in your procedure that appointment shall be done by the Supreme Court in case of international commercial arbitration and by the concerned high court in case of arbitration other than international commercial arbitration. This is the mechanism which we have in section 11 for the purpose of appointment of arbitrators. Now this has been modified by the 2019 amendment but the modifications have not been notified. So we have to understand this mechanism thoroughly. Now apart from these provisions that in case of default Supreme Court will appoint in case of default, high court will appoint as the case may be. There are other provisions also. For example, there is subsection 6a, subsection 6b. We will refer to these subsections later on. There are other subsections which are relevant to us. For example, subsection 7 and 8, we will be referring to these subsections very soon. What is important here is to note that this law, which I just mentioned, came into existence in the year 2015. Prior to 2015, the role given to the Supreme Court and High Court was actually given to the Chief Justice of Supreme Court and Chief Justice of the Concerned High Court. What I am trying to say is, 
in case of default today you will approach the supreme court prior to 2015 amendment in case of default the party would have approached the chief justice of india so chief justice of india used to appoint arbitrators in case of international commercial arbitration and chief justice of concerned high courts used to appoint arbitrators in cases of arbitration other than international commercial arbitration now during that time let's talk something about the law which existed prior to 2015 amendment now during that time when the law was enacted in 1996 the responsibility to appoint arbitrator in case of any default belonged to chief justice of india for international commercial arbitration chief justice of the concern high court for for an arbitration other than international commercial arbitration i hope this is clear now when chief justice will appoint arbitrator should chief justice look into questions such as validity of agreement should chief justice look into questions such as whether the party approaching is party to the arbitration agreement should the chief justice first of all give notice to the opposite party and allow him to come and contest is it a judicial function which the chief justice is performing or is it an administrative function which the chief justice is performing this was a very crucial question which used to emerge in various cases in two of the cases which you can see here konkan railway corporation limited versus mehul construction company this is 2000 case year 2000 and there is another case called as konkan railway corporation limited versus rani construction private limited this is also 2000 first is reported in 7 scc the second one is reported in 8 scc the question which arose in these two cases was what is the nature of order passed by the chief justice under section 11 because chief justice is appointing arbitrators in case of any default default means either of the parties are not appointing the appointed arbitrators are not appointing the arbitrator if there is an institution which has been designated for this job that institution is not appointing arbitrator in any of these defaults the, per, the person aggrieved the other party can approach the chief justice of india in case of ica can approach the chief justice of high court in case of any other arbitration arbitration, arbitration other than international commercial arbitration now the question which arose in these two cases one is mehul construction company the other is rani construction private limited the question which arose was what is the nature of order passed by chief justice in section 11 particularly in section 11 6 in konkan railway corporation versus mehul construction court examined the various arguments and held that because the job is not given to the court it has been given to the chief justice so it appears that it is not judicial the law which existed then differed from ancestral model law on this point because model law says appointment shall be done by court indian law says the appointment shall be done by the chief justice chief justice of india or chief justice of high court as the case may be and the supreme court in mehul construction company case said that if you consider this order to be judicial then the chief justice will be required to send a notice to the opposite party because judicial function is performed on the basis of submission of both the parties so the chief justice will have to send a notice to the other party the other party will come both the parties will make submissions on the basis of which the chief justice has to take a decision if it is a judicial function it will lead to many appeals reviews revisions and therefore the whole process will be delayed the purpose of this act is to set arbitration in motion as quickly as possible and if you allow chief justice to interfere in that significant manner at such a preliminary stage of arbitration that will frustrate the purpose and that will erode the confidence of international trading community on our law of arbitration therefore in order to avoid these situations let us call the orders passed by chief justice to be administrative order the court clarified that there cannot be any appeal because subsection 7 during that time said that no appeal shall lie against the order passed by chief justice except 
according to court under Article 226 before a High Court. So therefore, point number one, it is an administrative order because in order to avoid various consequences, you must call it administrative. And second, there can be only one appeal that is under Article 226 before the High Court. Now, when the matter again arose in the case of Konkan Railway Corporation Limited versus Rani Construction Private Limited, the smaller bench in this case expressed doubt on correctness of the Mehul construction decision. Because court says that there are many countries which have adopted ancestral model law and all these countries, most of these countries consider such orders to be of judicial nature. We have also adopted ancestral model law. Why the Supreme Court in Mehul construction is saying that let us consider it administrative? This logic is not clear. Court further said that there is today there is no difference between judicial order and administrative order in terms of number of reviews, number of appeals which can be made against a particular order. So that also does not justify as to why do we call such orders passed by Chief Justice to be administrative. This order by Chief Justice definitely going to affect one of my rights. If Chief Justice say if, if, if the order is of administrative nature, I will not be allowed to come and contest the matter. Whereas the decision to appoint somebody as arbitrator is going to affect my right to trial. I have a right to get my case before a court and if arbitrator is wrongly appointed, then it is definitely affecting my right to trial. And if a decision is affecting a right of somebody, it cannot be anything but a judicial decision. It has to be a judicial order. Second thing is, Supreme Court in Mehul Construction says that any order passed by Chief Justice can be challenged only before the High Court under Article 226 of the Constitution. That is also not acceptable. Will you put the decision order passed by Chief Justice of India for scrutiny before High Court that is against propriety? So these led to doubt the correctness of decision passed by the Supreme Court in Mehul construction case. Therefore, the matter was referred to a larger bench. But unfortunately, larger bench concurred with Mehul construction and agreed that such orders be called as administrative in nature. And again, this case came before Supreme Court in another matter called as Messrs. SBP and Company versus Messrs. Patel Engineering Limited, AIR 2006, Supreme Court 450. Now, you see, in 1996, this power was created in favor of Chief Justice. Nobody talked about nature of this power. In the year 2000, we came to a conclusion that the orders passed by Chief Justice is administrative. There is a change. Again in 2006, the matter came before a larger bench of Supreme Court in the case of SBP and Company versus Patel Engineering. The question was again, what is the nature of order passed by Chief Justice in Section 11? The moot question was, before appointing arbitrator in Section 11, should the Chief Justice issue notice to the other party? Should the Chief Justice allow the other party to come and contest? That is possible only when the order is of judicial nature. Should the Chief Justice determine the validity of the arbitration agreement? Suppose I have approached the Chief Justice of India with a request to appoint an arbitrator. Should the Chief Justice first of all examine the validity of arbitration agreement? Should the Chief Justice decide whether the party who is approaching with a request to appoint an arbitrator is party to the arbitration agreement? The person who is approaching with a request to appoint an arbitrator, is he a party to arbitration agreement? Should the Chief Justice also decide whether there is a live claim to be decided? Because you see, as we have discussed in Section 8, these are some of those questions which may be called as jurisdictional questions. You cannot assume jurisdiction in Section 11 unless you answer these questions. In SBP and Company versus Messrs Patel Engineering Limited case, Supreme Court clarified that all these questions are jurisdictional questions and Chief Justice gets jurisdiction to appoint an arbitrator only when he answers these questions. Whether the agreement in question is a valid agreement, 
whether there is a live claim, whether the party approaching is party to arbitration agreement and if the Chief Justice is deciding these jurisdictional questions, the function definitely will be judicial function and the judicial function can be performed on the basis of submission made by the parties. So therefore, both the parties will have to be invited and therefore notice will have to be issued to both the parties. This question was raised as I said in the case of SBP company. All these questions have already been answered by the Supreme Court in Mehul construction and Rani construction where court has already said that the order passed by Chief Justice is of administrative nature and these questions therefore need not be answered. Supreme Court need not answer these questions before appointing an arbitrator. In SBP company what court says? Court says the power has been given to the Chief Justice. See how it distinguishes from Mehul construction. If you recall I said in Mehul construction the Supreme Court said that we have deliberately given it to, the, it to the Chief Justice and not to the court because we don't want to keep it as a judicial function. Because we want to keep it as an administrative function, so therefore we have deliberately given to the Chief Justice. That is how we are different from ancestral model law. But in SBP company case, the Supreme Court says we have given it to Chief Justice not because we want to call it administrative, no. We have given it to Chief Justice because we do not want this power to be exercised by any court inferior to High Court, Chief Justice of High Court. So that courts up to the level of Court of District Judge are eliminated from exercising the power given in Section 11. So that we give it to the highest judicial authority. And in any case, if the Chief Justice does not have to answer these questions, the situation is there is a default committed by one party. One party is not appointing his arbitrator. The other party writes to the Chief Justice that these are the circumstances, kindly appoint an arbitrator for my case. Chief Justice does not have to send notice to the other party if it is an administrative function. The Chief Justice does not have to answer any of the jurisdictional questions if it is administrative in nature. What will the Chief Justice do? He will get the request and he will straight away find out a man who can be a good arbitrator for that case and appoint him. If such a mechanical job had to be given to somebody, why to give such a mechanical job to the highest judicial authority of state or highest judicial authority of the country? And therefore, there was doubt on the correctness of Mehul construction and Rani construction. Giving this responsibility to the highest judicial authority of state, to the highest judicial authority of the country, definitely means there is some application of judicial mind involved here. Section 11 also said, even today it says that appointment can be made by Chief Justice of India or Chief Justice of Concern High Court or any person or institution designated by Chief Justice. After 2015 amendment, now it says the appointment shall be made by Supreme Court or the High Court as the case may be or any institution person designated by the Supreme Court or the High Court. So therefore, the, the appointment can be done by the Chief Justice himself, it can be done by any person or institution who has been designated by the Chief Justice to appoint arbitrator. Now it was argued that if the power can be delegated to any person, any institution, it need not be a judicial institution. It can be a inst financial institution for example, FIKI may be authorized to appoint arbitrator by the Chief Justice of some high court. Now, it can be delegated to a non-judicial body. How can it be a judicial function? A judicial function can never be delegated to a non-judicial body. On this argument, the Supreme Court said that every power exercisable by the Chief Justice in Section 11 has got two aspects. It has got judicial aspect and administrative aspect. Judicial aspect means send the notice to opposite party, invite submissions, decide these jurisdictional questions, validity, etc. Administrative parties locate the right person who can be appointed as an arbitrator. Supreme Court says even if the power to appoint arbitrator is to be delegated to some person or institution, only the second part, the administrative part that is to locate an appropriate person can be delegated. And delegation can be done only once the Supreme Court decides those jurisdictional questions. So therefore, Supreme Court in SBP company case said that Chief Justice of India, Chief Justice of Concern High Court should decide 
questions, jurisdictional questions in judicial manner before deciding to appoint an arbitrator. The decision passed by Chief Justice is of judicial nature. Now, if you recall, we have discussed it in section 8 that there was a case called as HPCL versus Pink City Midway Petroleum in which Supreme Court in the context of Section 8 said that judicial authority before referring the matter for arbitration is obliged to, has to, is entitled to decide these jurisdictional questions. The situation was comparable when you refer the matter in Section 8 to arbitration, the right to trial is affected. Similarly, when the Chief Justice appoints an arbitrator and sends the matter for arbitration, right to trial is affected. When the consequences are same, you are allowing this validity determination to be done by the judicial authority in section 8. Why can't this power be recognized for the Chief Justice? If judicial authority in section 8 can determine validity of an arbitration agreement, why can't Chief Justice of India do the same? in section 11 when the consequences of section 8 and section 11 are same. So therefore, on the basis of these justifications, Supreme Court came to the conclusion that the nature of order passed by Chief Justice, whether it is Chief Justice of India or Chief Justice of Concern High Court, is judicial in nature and before any order of appointment of arbitrator is passed by the Chief Justice, a notice must be sent to the opposite party so that he can contest, present submissions on the basis of these submissions, the Chief Justice has to take a decision. That was the law and from the judgment of SBP company, the law was that whatever order passed by Chief Justice is judicial and there will be a lot of judicial intervention increasing. Every time a request will go to the Chief Justice for appointment of arbitrator, the other party will be invited and it will, the whole process will be delayed because now the Chief Justice will answer those questions, whether the agreement is valid, whether there is a live claim and so on and so forth. And once the Chief Justice is convinced about these questions, then only an arbitrator will be appointed. So therefore, the idea of commencing the arbitration, the idea of setting the arbitration in motion as quickly as possible got defeated. Judicial intervention increased in the beginning itself at this stage of appointment of arbitrator itself. Therefore, some developments took place after SBP decision. One such development is the 246th Law Commission report, which made recommendations for amendment to sections 8 and 11. Why I am referring to both the sections together because the consequences of both the sections are same. When the matter is referred for arbitration under section 8, it goes for arbitration and a claim of trial is affected. When the appointment of arbitrator is done in section 11, the matter goes for arbitration and the claim of trial is affected. So therefore, I am referring to both these provisions. Law Commission in 246th report advised changes. The scope of judicial intervention because as I said, from SBP company decision, from Pink City Midway Petroleum decision, what happened is judicial intervention in the beginning itself, arbitration has not even commenced. Section 8 is the stage of referring the matter for arbitration, Section 11 is the stage of appointment of arbitrator. At such preliminary stage, the judicial intervention has increased because of these two decisions. Now it is in the context of judicial intervention that Law Commission has given its report. Law Commission says the scope of judicial intervention is only restricted to situations where the court or judicial authority finds that arbitration agreement does not exist or is null or void. We have discussed this point in our lecture on uh, section 8 also. You can see here, if the judicial authority is of the opinion and you can apply the same with respect to Chief Justice of India, Chief Justice of Concern High Court. If the judicial authority, this is in the context of section 8, you apply the same in the context of section 11, I will tell you how. If the judicial authority is of the opinion that prima facie the arbitration agreement exists, this becomes if the chief justice is of the opinion that prima facie the arbitration agreement exists, then it shall refer the dispute to arbitration, then chief justice shall appoint arbitrators and leave the existence of arbitration agreement to be finally determined by the tribunal. So in section 8, the 
the recommendation of law commission is now onwards the judicial authority will not determine validity of arbitration agreement it will only see whether the agreement is prima facie valid if it finds prima facie valid agreement it will refer the matter for arbitration same is the case here in section 11 now the chief justice if chief justice is to be given this power or high court supreme court whosoever gets the power after the amendment if the chief justice finds a prima facie valid agreement then he must appoint arbitrators once arbitrators are appointed the tribunal comes into existence and the tribunal will finally determine the validity of arbitration agreement so therefore this was the suggestion prior to this suggestion what was happening the judicial authority was determining the final validity the chief justice of india was finally determining the validity and because of these provisions the scope of section 16 was curtailed because if a matter goes to arbitration either through 8 or through 11 the question of validity of arbitration agreement has already been decided once it has been decided by none less than chief justice of india can a tribunal reopen the question and say that no the chief justice decided it wrongly actually the arbitration agreement is invalid no the very existence of tribunal depends on the decision taken by the judicial authority in section 8 and the chief justice in section 11 so therefore what happens is once the matter goes to the arbitration either through 8 or through 11 the power of, of tribunal in section 16 to decide validity of an arbitration agreement is is curtailed is substantially reduced and in case the judicial authority does not refer the matter for arbitration that can happen only when judicial authority comes to the conclusion that no prima facie valid agreement exists in case the chief justice does not appoint arbitrators that can only happen if chief justice comes to a prima facie uh, conclusion that no prima facie ag valid agreement exists in these two situations the matter can be appealed in the court the matter can be appealed in court and these determinations are final determinations and as i have already mentioned in our discussion on section 8 appeal is possible only against final determination appeal is not possible against prima facie determination so that is that was the kind of suggestion given by law commission of india in its 246 report law commission wanted to say that judicial authority in 8 must only see prima facie validity similarly whosoever is given the power to appoint arbitrator whether it is chief justice or supreme court high court whatever that authority will only see existence of prima facie valid agreement these bodies will not get into detailed inquiry these bodies will not get into examination of the so-called jurisdictional questions whether the agreement is valid whether there is a live claim whether the party approaching is party to arbitration agreement so therefore the entire discussion will limit only to determination of prima facie validity nothing more nothing less right so that was the opinion of law commission and that was what law commission says in its 246 report we need to confine the inquiry only to the prima facie validity and let's not allow judicial authority in 8 and and the chief justice in section 11 to go beyond this inquiry don't allow these bodies to determine questions such as validity etc which i mentioned now comes 2015 amendment so what we saw we saw in 1996 section 11 comes along with the act which gave power to the chief justice then in the year 2000 the two cases mehul construction rani construction where the question of uh, nature of order was discussed it was decided that it is administrative so other party may not be invited judicial questions may not be answered therefore the whole process may be expedited validity will not be determined by the chief justice under section 11 it remains the responsibility of arbitral tribunal in section 16 then came sbp company in 2006 which changed the whole law and now uh, the power of chief justice becomes judicial and therefore the chief justice decides the validity of arbitration agreement and thus once the matter goes through 11 to arbitration then arbitral tribunal shall not have that power so that is how uh, because of this interpretation the scope of section 16 got narrowed down this continued till 2015 
and in 2015 an amendment came which substantially modified section 11. The first change which happened, the responsibility of Chief Justice of India was given to the Supreme Court of India. The responsibility of Chief Justices of Concern High Court is given to the High Court. So that confusion goes whether it is judicial or administrative because of the power given to the Chief Justice person designated. That issue goes. So it is clear that now the power shall be exercised by the Supreme Court of India in case of international commercial arbitration and power shall be exercised by the concerned high courts in case of arbitration other than international commercial arbitration. I mentioned first six clauses. In addition to those, there are two important inclusions here. One is 116A, the other is 116B. Now these are important. The Supreme Court or as the case may be, the High Court, while considering any application, application with a request to appoint an arbitrator. In case of any default, either party is not appointing, the appointed arbitrators are not appointing the third arbitrator. If there is an institution designated which will be appointing and that institution is not appointing, in case of any default, we can write an application, we can send an application to the Supreme Court or High Court as the case may be. Now what 6A says, 116A says, the Supreme Court or as the case may be the High Court while considering any application under subsection 4, subsection 5 or subsection 6 shall notwithstanding any judgment, decree or order of any court confined to the examination of the existence of an arbitration agreement. Now this is important. Notwithstanding anything said in any judgment, any decision of any court. So therefore this overrules SBP company case. This overrules any other judgment which was, which was contrary to what now parliament says. And parliament says now while entertaining the application which the Supreme Court or High Court may have received under subsection 4, subsection 5 or subsection 6, the Supreme Court or High Court has to confine its inquiry only to examination of existence, prima facie existence of the agreement. I will pause here for a moment because I will be comparing new 11 with new 8. The old 8 now changes. In the new section 8, the judicial authority has to see prima facie validity of the agreement. In new 11, the Supreme Court or High Court does not have to see prima facie validity of the agreement. Supreme Court, High Court will have to see prima facie existence of the agreement. Now this difference is not justified. When the problems were same in 8 and 11, the solution should have been same. If the power to determine prima facie validity has been given to judicial authority in section 8, we could have given the similar power to the Supreme Court in section 116A. But there is a difference. Why do we have this difference will gradually come out. In a, section 8, judicial authority will now examine prima facie validity of arbitration agreement. In section 11, Supreme Court, High Court will only see whether there is prima facie existence of the agreement. Whether there is an agreement, yes or no, that's it. Whether it is valid, prima facie valid, all these questions are not relevant in section 11. So if you write an application, the only thing which the Supreme Court has to see whether there is an agreement in place or not. That's it. If there is an agreement in place, the Supreme Court will go ahead and appoint an arbitrator for you or the High Court as the case may be. 116B says the designation of any person or institution by the Supreme Court or as the case may be the High Court. I mentioned if you remember, Chief Justice will appoint the arbitrator or arbitrator will be appointed by any person or institution designated by Chief Justice. So this power can be delegated to any person or institution by the Chief Justice. That was the law. Now the new law says Supreme Court, High Court will appoint the arbitrator or the appointment can be made by any person or institution designated by the Supreme Court or the High Court as the case may be. Now what 6b says, this designation of any person or institution by the Supreme Court this designation by the High Court shall not be regarded as delegation of judicial power. 
if the institution is appointing it is not performing any judicial function it is not exercising any judicial power the true scope true meaning of 116b is yet to be determined this provision awaits an authoritative interpretation whether it means that when the supreme court is exercising the power it is judicial power when the institution is exercising the same power it became something other than judicial power or does it mean that in no case it be considered as a judicial power that question is still unanswered but one thing is very clear in 116a that when the supreme court or high court has to appoint an arbitrator they will not go into details of answering the, all those jurisdictional questions courts only will see prima facie existence of the arbitration agreement whether it is a judicial order whether it is an administrative order that discussion is no more relevant it seems but if you read section 11 subsection 13 i don't have it on my slide but if you read 11 subsection 13 it prescribes a timeline within which the high court or the supreme court shall complete the or dispose of the application it says that an endeavor shall be made by the supreme court and the high court to dispose of the application application of request to appoint an arbitrator the supreme court high court shall dispose of the application within these many days from the date when the notice is served to the opposite party so within these many days 60 days whatever within these many days the court has to dispose of the application how do you calculate these days from the date when the notice is served to the opposite party why are we serving the notice to opposite party why should the supreme court serve a notice to the opposite party when supreme court doesn't have to go into any of the questions supreme court doesn't have to determine validity it only has to see an agreement if agreement exists it has to appoint the arbitrator if that is the power why the supreme court should send a notice to the opposite party one meaning can be sending the opposite party would mean the opposite party will come and contest therefore it becomes judicial that should not be the intention of the parliament here in this provision sending the notice the other meaning can be we are sending the notice so as to inform the other party that supreme court or the high court is entertaining an application in relation to a matter in which you are one of the parties just for information sake i believe that probably is what parliament must have intended send a notice to the opposite party that's a requirement of fairness of any procedure send a notice to the opposite party and send it for information purpose not for the purpose of inviting him to contest because there is no issue which has to be contested except that the supreme court high court has to see whether there is an agreement in existence or not now this provision which came in 2015 was interpreted formally by the supreme court in the case called as duro felguera sa duro felguera sa versus gangavaram port limited Duro Felguera S A versus Gangavaram Port Limited A I R 2017 Supreme Court 5070. So in 2015 an amendment is done. That amendment does two significant things. The power is no more with the Chief Justice. It is with the Supreme Court or the High Court as the case may be. Supreme Court for I C A, High Court for arbitrations other than international commercial arbitration. And we are only talking about India seated arbitration. We are only talking about domestic arbitrations. whether it is pure domestic between indians in india or it is ica in india between parties where at least one party has got international character the first change is the power now belongs to supreme court high court the second change is while exercising this power the supreme court the high court has to confine its inquiry only to the prima facie existence on this point as i said 11 becomes different from 8 in 8 judicial authority has to decide prima facie validity in section 11 the supreme court high court will have to decide only prima facie existence what do we mean by prima facie existence what do we mean by prima facie existence that question came before the supreme court in the case of duro felguera sa versus gangavaram port limited in which there was a contract given to duro felguera 
and its Indian subsidiary by Gangavaram Port Limited to develop an all-weather port at Gangavaram. This contract, this tender document was divided into five different packages for the convenience. Tender was granted to Durofel Guerra and its Indian subsidiary. Indian subsidiary is called as FGI. FGI. There was one tender document that was divided into five packages. Five packages containing five different job descriptions. This part is to be done by Duro Felguera itself. These four to be performed by FGI. FGI is an Indian company. Duro Felguera is a Spanish company. And in order to implement these five packages, five different contracts were done. Gangavaram Port Limited and Duro Felguera, one contract. And four other contracts between Gangavaram Port Limited and FGI, the Indian subsidiary of Duro Felguera. So, tender document was divided into five different documents. Tender document gets converted into five different contracts. All these five contracts had arbitration clause. Any dispute arising out of this contract shall be resolved by way of arbitration to be done according to this method. All these five contracts provided for arbitration clause. In addition to these five documents, there was a memorandum of understanding between three parties. There was a bank guarantee between Duro Felguera and Gangavaram Port Limited. So, there were many arbitration clauses. Some documents had arbitration clause. Some documents did not have arbitration clause. I will not go in details of the facts. Duro Felguera and FGI were arguing because uh, after, after some time a dispute arose and when dispute arose, the Gangavaram Port Limited wanted to terminate the contract. Gangavaram Port Limited wanted to encash the bank guarantee. So, dispute enhanced, increased as a result of which the parties wanted to refer the matter for arbitration. Now, when this question came before the Supreme Court, the advocate from Gangavaram Port Limited said that because all these contracts are emanating from the same tender document, let's appoint one tribunal which will look into all the disputes, disputes between Gangavaram Port Limited and Duro Felguera, at the same time disputes between Gangavaram Port Limited and FGI. All these disputes can be put together. And there can be one tribunal looking into all these disputes because all these contracts emanate from one tender document. We converted one tender document into five packages and therefore five contracts for the convenience. There were arguments, one interesting argument which, which FGI took, the Indian subsidiary. It said that if there is an arbitration between Duro Felguera and Gangavaram Port Limited, it will be an international commercial arbitration. And many things in relation to international commercial arbitration, as we will discuss later on in other lectures, many things in relation to international commercial arbitration are different as compared to pure domestic arbitration. My law treats pure domestic arbitration differently and ICA done in India differently. Now, FGI said the arbitration between Gangavaram Port Limited and Duro Felguera will be international commercial arbitration because one party has got international character. Whereas the arbitration between Gangavaram Port Limited and FGI will be pure domestic arbitration. Now, if you club these two and call it international commercial arbitration, I am at loss. FGI is at loss. Because when we will discuss section 34, we will realize, we will see that in pure domestic arbitration, you have eight grounds to challenge an arbitral award. Whereas, in case of international commercial arbitration, you have seven grounds to challenge an arbitral award. Now, FGI is saying, if I am made party to ICA, I will lose the benefit of that additional ground to challenge the arbitral award. So, these were the arguments. Let us not go into the arguments. Let us not go into the details. What court finally did is very important. Court appointed one tribunal for international commercial arbitration between Gangavaram Port Limited and Juro Felguera. And court appointed four tribunals for pure domestic arbitration between Gangavaram Port Limited and FGI. 
and the basis to appoint these five tribunals. You may have same arbitrators in all these tribunals. That's a different thing. But Supreme Court said we will appoint five tribunals. Why? Because we see five arbitration agreements. This is how the Supreme Court applied 116A, which says that while appointing arbitrators, the court has to confine its inquiry only to the prima facie existence of the agreement. Nothing more, nothing less. So court only saw if there is an agreement. Yes, there is one agreement, appoint a tribunal. Another agreement, appoint another tribunal. Third agreement, third tribunal. Fourth agreement, fourth tribunal. Five agreements, there will be five tribunals. That is how section 6A was applied. 116A was applied. In the case of Duro Felguera versus Gangavaram Port Limited. But that is not all. Another case came in the year 2018, the very next year. It is called United India Insurance Company Limited. United India Insurance Company Limited and another versus Hyundai Engineering and Construction Company Limited. Hyundai Engineering and Construction Company Limited and others. This case was decided by the Supreme Court in 2018. This was a case in which some construction contract was given to a company. Before starting the construction project, the company took insurance policy covering the entire project value. Now, during the process of construction, because of some events, accidents took place which led to huge loss to the company which was doing construction. Because there was huge loss, so company wanted to claim something from the insurance company. Now, let us go back. I said construction contract was awarded. In order to perform the contract before starting the performance, there was an insurance policy taken. The insurance document between the construction company and the insurance company provided for an arbitration clause. If there is any dispute arising out of this insurance policy, what will happen to that? The clause provided that, you can see here, the arbitration clause in that insurance policy provided that, if any dispute shall arise, as to the quantum to be paid under this policy, how much money is to be paid under this policy, if there is any dispute, if any dispute shall arise as to the quantum to be paid under this policy, within brackets you see liability being otherwise admitted, liability being otherwise admitted, such difference shall independently of all other questions be referred to the decision of an arbitrator. So the clause provided that in case there is a claim, and the liability has been admitted by the insurance company. Then any dispute or question related to quantum to be paid, that question can be referred for arbitration. This is what the arbitration clause provided for. There is an arbitration agreement, but it clearly says that only that situation is arbitrable where the claim has been admitted in principle and only the quantum to be paid is in dispute. That shall be referred for arbitration. But what happened here? When accident took place, loss took place, the construction company wrote to the insurance company with its claim. The insurance company appointed a surveyor. The surveyor submitted the report saying that this much is the loss, but the loss has not occurred because of any, uh, any unforeseen situation. The loss has occurred because of negligence of the construction company, poor workmanship. Government also appointed a committee, that committee also submitted its report saying that the loss has happened, the accident has happened because of poor workmanship, negligence of the people involved in construction. Therefore, insurance company refuted the claim, denied the claim. When the claim is denied, there is no question of paying any quantum of money and therefore there is no question of any dispute to be referred for arbitration, the situation was clear. The, the, the contract also said that in such a situation when it, there is no question of arbitration, the matter will be sent for, for trial and suit has to be filed within three months. There was some limitation prescribed. Now what happened? The construction company wanted to invoke the arbitration clause because the insurance company refused to pay the money. So construction company wanted to inv invoke the arbitration clause. When nothing happened, Hyundai Engineering, the construction company, wrote to the Supreme Court with a request to appoint the arbitrator. 
the application for appointment of arbitrator was sent to the court. Now, if you apply Duro Felguera, what is the job of the court? At the time of appointing arbitrator, court has to see existence of agreement. So, it was argued on behalf of Hyundai Engineering that see, there is an agreement in place. What is written in the agreement is not your job. You don't have to get into the question of determining whether this dispute is arbitrable on the basis of agreement or not. You only have to see whether there is an agreement or not. We are presenting the agreement, you appoint arbitrators, rest will be done by the arbitral tribunal. But in this case, Supreme Court deviates from Duro Felguera. And court says that Duro Felguera is not applicable. Court did not say that we are overruling Duro Felguera. It only said that it is not applicable because it is a general observation. It is a decision of a smaller bench, two judges. It is not that binding on us. It is a general observation. We are dealing with a specific case and therefore we would like to deviate. We are not overruling Duro Felguera. We are deviating slightly. Court will not only see existence of agreement. Court may go beyond it. And court, Supreme Court, High Court can interpret the arbitration agreement to see whether the issue is essentially arbitrable or not, whether it is an exempted matter or whether it is arbitrable matter. And court went beyond mere existence and in this case saw that once the claim is denied, nothing remains to be arbitrated because there is no question left regarding quantum to be paid. And therefore, in the instant case, court refused to appoint the arbitrators. That is something which is beyond the legislative intent of section 116A. I will stop here with a few observations. We discussed the journey of section 11 from 1996 till 2015 amendment. The judicial flip-flop on the issue of power of court in section 11 continues even beyond 2018 judgment of Hyundai Engineering. I will be referring to some of those decisions in my next lecture. I will also talk about the amendment of 2019, which changed the whole section 11. But only thing is that amendment has not been notified. It will be notified along with part 1A of the Act. So in the next lecture, we will talk about more decisions on section 11 and we'll talk about the new provision which came after 2019-11. That's all on the first part of appointment procedure. In the next lecture, we'll conclude our discussion on appointment procedure. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude, immoral, vulgar, and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare, as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. 
None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.